Friends, we're continuing in this series uh, that we started a few weeks ago entitled Busy, Reconnecting with an Unhurried God. I love that phrase, unhurried. So often we're in a hurry, but we have a God who isn't, who's ready <laughs> whenever we're ready to slow down and listen, to slow down and engage. Today we have a, a, a very short but beautiful passage. Jesus, you get the idea, had been looking out over these people he had been ministering to, the, the crowds that he had been teaching, and there was a level that he just saw the burdens they were carrying. Many of them were, some were merchants, some were peasants, and just the pressure of daily life, but also some of the expectations that some of the religious leaders of that day were foisting upon the people were just weighing them down. And seeing that, Jesus spoke this promise and this invitation to them. But it wasn't just for them, it's for us. So I invite you to hear it as we unpack Jesus' words for us today. Our reading today is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 28 to 30, which can be found on page 809 in the Bibles you were given as you entered. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. They call it the rat race or living on a hamster wheel. Take a look. He does survive. I watched the end of the video. So all you animal lovers, this was not abuse. It was just, but I watched a little snippet like that, and I just can resonate. Sometimes I feel like the hamster on the wheel, and sometimes I feel like the one just holding on for dear life. My guess is there are moments like that for you as well. When I've thought about it over the last weeks as we've been in this series, I've been trying to reflect on what are the things that drive us often to live busy, busy lives. To me, it is, in my reflection, it seems like there are two things today that seem to drive it. One of those is FOMO, and the other is expectations. For those of you who aren't familiar with the term, FOMO just means fear of missing out. We're surrounded by so many options these days, so many opportunities, and, and many of us have some means to be able to pursue some of those. But we're always afraid, like, well, I'm doing this, but, oh, maybe I should be doing that. And even like when we're having a great time, what, whatever we're doing or wherever we're at, sometimes our phones will ping us a little notification, and. We'll pick them up and look and see someone else is doing something else and we'll go, oh, maybe I should be doing that. And the anxiousness of so many options and having to make choices, I think, drives us sometimes to keep packing more in than we should. I think one of the other drivers of busy, though, is also the expectations in our lives. Our expectations for ourselves or expectations for our kids, our culture's expectations, or even God's expectations for us. 
We live in this swirl of expectations around us, and we keep trying to measure up to what the world says we should be doing or what we think God is telling us to do. And sometimes in the swirl of that, we just keep going, going, going. But for me, as I said before, busy isn't simply how much we have in our schedule because some of us can handle a lot of activity and still feel rested and renewed and other of us, two or three things and we're a little stressed. It really, busy is about how we feel about that rhythm of our lives. And then when that rhythm gets out of whack, we feel the anxiousness of busy, the overwhelm of busy, the stress of too much packed in, the stress of unmet expectations, the anxiety of not being where we should be. And too often we live that way. But there's another way of living at a pace that feels reasonable and sustainable and fulfilling. In Jesus' day, I don't know that they lived so much with FOMO because they didn't have that many options like we do. And they certainly didn't have cell phones and social media to tell them what everyone else was doing. But they certainly lived with expectations. Expectations of their community, as many lived in small towns, expectations of their families, and expectations from God. And as Jesus looked at the people struggling in front of him, his heart broke. And he spoke this word of promise and invitation to them. Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Doesn't that sound good? <laughs> Doesn't it? When we're weary and weighed down with expectations or anxiousness about what we should be doing. Either because, and then what results from that, either the racing around in our lives or the racing around in our brains. We just want some rest. Give me a hammock on a sunny day. <laughs> Give me a nap with the curtains closed. Give me rest. And that is what Jesus promises us today, friends. He promises us rest. Now, some of you, knowing that we started out this series by providing you all with God boxes to help us to put our worries and our anxiousness in there, you may be looking around and going, like, what are they giving us today? Are we going to be getting the heavenly swing lounger as we leave worship today? Maybe that's what they're handing out. Well, look around. It's not there. Sorry. Because when Jesus promises us rest, he doesn't promise us this, as appealing as that looks. Actually, he promises us something very different, something surprising, something that feels like it almost undermines the promise of rest. Because Jesus' next line after saying, and I will give you rest, he then says this, take my yoke upon you. For those of you who don't know what a yoke looks like, it's that thing up on the top. And yes, that's how a yoke is used. <laughs> that doesn't look as appealing as a heavenly swing lounger, in my mind. A yoke is a tool for getting things done. A yoke is a tool for moving heavy weights. And Jesus says, I'll give you one. And I'm like, thank you very much, Jesus. Keep your yoke to yourself. You see, when we think of rest, we think of Vacations, sitting on a beach with an umbrella drink in our hand. But think about it for a minute, friends. If we live crazy busy lives 50 weeks out of a year, and then for one week or two we get away 
to collapse in exhaustion only to pick it up and run crazy pace for another 50 weeks and do that again and again, that ain't the greatest rhythm for one's life. What Jesus wants to offer us is a release from unhealthy expectations, a rhythm that can work year round, a healthy rhythm, a sustainable rhythm. He calls it a yoke, his yoke, a way of living and doing in the world that makes sense, that doesn't overwhelm, a way of seeing the world and being in the world that is fulfilling, but not overfull. And if you wonder what that looks like, what that rhythm looks like, well, in the very next line, Jesus tells us what it is and how to find it. For he says, let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Friends, if we are going to find a healthy rhythm for our lives, Jesus essentially says, look at my life. Look at how I did life, because I am here to model for you a healthy, wholesome rhythm for your life. So I want to just take the last few minutes that we have together and, and look at three practices in Jesus' life where he modeled living a healthy rhythm. So let's look at them. First thing, though, to be aware of is Jesus worked hard. Jesus worked very hard in his ministry life. In Mark's gospel, in the third chapter, we read this. One time, Jesus entered a house. The crowds began to gather again. Soon, he and his disciples couldn't even find time to eat. Friends, there are times where I work hard as a pastor. I can work very hard, but I never miss out on a meal. I have my priorities straight. I find food somewhere. Earlier in that chapter, Jesus, Mark also tells us this. A large crowd followed Jesus. He instructed his disciples to have a boat ready so the crowd would not crush him. He had healed many people that day, and so all the sick people eagerly pushed forward to touch him. Jesus worked hard, and he had a job that wasn't sort of nine to five, clear start and stop. People could approach him at any time. And so the first thing that we see in Jesus' life is he needed to set healthy boundaries. And he did. He often tells his disciples, if you read through the Gospels, he said, we're heading across the lake. He keeps crossing the Sea of Galilee back and forth here and there. I think he just needed some break, some time out on the water. But also, like, this crowd was getting overwhelming, I'm going to go over here and minister in this area. Jesus was amazingly responsive to people. But he also knew he couldn't be available all the time because he was God, but he was a human being. He had to set healthy boundaries. I love this little story also from the Gospel of Mark where we see Jesus doing that. There was one day where he went and he, te he taught, he preached a sermon in Capernaum, in this hometown of Peter, this sort of base of operations. He, so he preached in the morning. He came back to Peter's home in the afternoon, and Peter's mother-in-law was sick. And so he got, just got done preaching, and, oh, she's sick. He heals her in the afternoon. And then word gets out that he has done that, and so then crowds come. Well, listen, here's how Mark describes it. He says, that evening, after sunset... Many sick and demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. The whole town gathered around to watch. Talk about intense and demanding. You started preaching, then you heal one person, and now there's a crowd wanting your touch. 
And he does. He heals them through that evening. But listen to what he does next. It says, before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up and went to an isolated place to pray. Later, Simon and the others went out to find him. When they found him, they said, everyone's looking for you, Jesus. Do you hear the expectations there? Jesus is trying to get away, and they're going, here's what you need to be doing. But listen how Jesus responds. We must go to other towns as well, and I will preach to them. That is why I came. Jesus didn't succumb to the success expectations that built up around him. He kept going back to God, setting boundaries, and staying focused on how he could live a healthy, sustainable ministry life. So let me ask you, how do you set boundaries, healthy boundaries, in your life? And let me be clear, not boundaries around the bad stuff, boundaries around the good stuff. That's the hard boundaries to set. I remember a number of years ago, a woman who used to attend here at Light of Christ, and she was very involved in ministries. I remember overhearing her one time saying, I am active in seven ministries here at this church serving. And I remember hearing that because I wasn't in the country. I was sort of overhearing. I go, wow, that's a lot. How's that sustainable? And then I remember about two years later, suddenly she disappeared. I called her, I reached out to her, nothing. And looking back, what I realized is she said yes to everything until she got to the point where she had to say no to everything. <laughs> she wasn't living at a healthy, sustainable pace. She didn't set healthy boundaries. Some families share with me that they've just set this healthy boundary that for their kids, they can be involved in two activities in any season, but not more than that. They just say, more than that, it just overwhelms the family schedule, and we, we're just chasing after each other. They said, that's the boundary that we need to set. One of the boundaries that I set, I don't have my work email, my church email on my phone. I have my laptop around me, just about whenever I need it, my Surface, and I can get to it, but I don't have it pinging me all the time, like, ooh, I gotta go do this trying to set a healthy boundary in our lives. But here's the second thing I see Jesus modeling for us. To help us find a healthy rhythm in our lives. Is he creates a consistent spiritual life, a consistent spiritual practice in his life. In Luke 4, 16, we read this. When Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. The Jewish Sabbath is Saturday. We gather for worship on Sunday, but Jewish people gather for worship on either on a Friday night or on, on that Saturday. But listen to the phrase. Jesus said, or Mark says, Jesus did this as was his custom. Jesus had a rhythm to his spiritual life. And he gathered for worship with other believers every week. Now just think about that for a second. Here is the Son of God come in the flesh. Here is the most God-centered person the world has ever known, and yet he creates in the rhythm of his life a focus on weekly gathering with others for worship, to hear God's word, to lift up his voice in praise to the God who had sent him and made him. See, I'm amazed at the number of people these days who say, you know, I, I worship once in a while when, when I feel I need it. Otherwise, I'm good. Jesus chose to worship weekly, but we don't say we need that. I guess maybe some of us are better than Jesus. <laughs> it wasn't that Jesus always heard amazing sermons or soul-stirring music. I'm sure he didn't. But that practice of weekly worship was a custom, that a practice that he adopted in his life to help him stay grounded, to remind him of what's real, to help him stay focused in 
the life that he wanted to live. So I ask you today, do you have consistency in your spiritual life? Now I know it's not that the sermons at Light of Christ or other churches are always brilliant, and worship teams even occasionally miss a note or two. Oh, is Josh here? He wasn't supposed to hear that. Um, we don't always get it perfect here. But there's something about that rhythm that helps us to just remember what's foundational in our lives when there's so many other voices shouting out at us through the week. But there's also the, the rhythm of daily prayer. I know many of you have chosen to make sort of a, a, a early morning quiet time. You wake up and grab your coffee and read a devotional or spend a little time in scripture to just sort of center yourself on a daily basis. That can be a great daily practice. I grew up in a family where we had the, the daily practice that whenever we would gather for a meal, we would just start the meal with prayer. Sometimes it'd be spontaneous, someone leading, sometimes a, the family would say a prayer together. I've kept that routine in my life and both when I'm just having a bite of lunch on my own or with family, sometimes one of us will say the prayer or we'll say this common table prayer. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. And let these gifts to us be blessed. Amen. Do those words always strike me as profound before every meal? No. But do they remind me as I'm putting the fork in the potato or whatever that this is a gift from God? Reminds me. And just that opening phrase, come, Lord Jesus. Well, it just reminds me to invite Jesus into that moment and through that into each moment of my day. Jesus modeled a consistency in his spiritual life that kept him focused and in rhythm day by day and week by week. If you're working on a stressful project for work, and it's time to grab a little lunch, if you just pause for a quick prayer before you eat, might that be the moment that reminds you God is in that project that you're doing? That God is there to guide you and strengthen you, and also give you a perspective on it? And might just a sentence of prayer in that moment remind let go of some of the anxiousness that God is with you even in your work life. One final thing. There's more things we could look at in Jesus' life, but I only have so much time today. That I think Jesus wants to teach us to find that rest in our lives is that he also practiced a spontaneous spiritual life. Again and again in the New Testament in the Gospels, we read that in the midst of Jesus demanding ministry, you, would sud you suddenly come upon lines like this. Jesus went up to the mountains to pray. Or when Jesus was al praying alone, Jesus would grab quick moments of prayer in the midst of what was going on. He would just take moments and sort of step away from what was happening and go like, oh God, I'm going to need help on this one. <laughs> and then re-engage. He would just occasionally, when he was feeling the pressure building or the demand surging around him, he'd just get away to sort of catch his breath, to take a moment with his Heavenly Father, to breathe, to breathe, to breathe in God's presence. So he would be then ready to step back in to whatever was before him. And in that time when Jesus would be away, what I think he just did is he just offloaded the anxiousness, offloaded the stress to his heavenly father so he could be present to the moment. But friends, I think so often what we do is when, when things start building around us, we just think we just got to plow through it. So we just go, go, go. 
rather than spontaneously just going, I just need a moment to breathe. God, I need your help in this, and just unload, offload our stress onto God so that we can breathe and find the rest that we need, even when things are a little crazy around us. Now, I know you'd prefer if I was handing out lazy boys today as you were walking out the door, but I actually do believe what Jesus has to offer is better. It's a way of life. It's a yoke to help us find a healthy rhythm day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year. To set healthy boundaries, <laughs> to get consistency in our spiritual life, and also to take those spontaneous moments when we need just to breathe with God. Because Jesus wants the best for you. And he models a way for us to find it. So here again, his invitation and his offer to you. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Let's find the right rhythm and rest in our Lord. Let's pray. Jesus, we're here today because your reckless love keeps reaching out to us and in the, the scurrying of our lives. Sometimes we can lose sight of how to really live. So just meet with us in this time of worship today and remind us of what is real. Remind us of rhythms that can keep us breathing, keep us sane, keep us healthy and whole. Thank you for meeting us here today. And may your word speak deeply into our souls this morning. In your name, Jesus, we pray.